that. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm honored to talk today at DrupalCon about uh, content migration into Drupal 8. Um, and I think it's time when I can start my presentation. So my name is Irina Zaks. I'm web developer, I'm Drupal developer, and I'm open source evangelist. I teach uh, Drupal technology courses at uh, Stanford University, and I also started uh, Fibonacci Web Studio, and this is a company uh, where we're doing advanced web development for research, uh, we develop advanced tools for research and academia. Um, in today's presentation, we're going to talk about content migration tools that are available in Drupal 8. Um, there's a large number of very important topics that we will not cover today, including world peace. So <laughs> before diving into actual presentation, I want to give everyone a warning. I made decision to do a live demo. We're entering wilderness. Uh, this laptop uses dev tools, my sites use dev tools, things might and they will break. Also, another great thing is that screenshots that I took two weeks ago are now, up, some of them are obsolete because while we're sitting here and talking, some people downstairs in the sprint launch are coding and submitting patches. So by the time we get home, back home to our offices, things will work even better than I show you today. So stay calm and Drupal on. Before we dive into technical things, I want to take a bird's eye view like why we are migrating content. Because the question why is always the most important. We have all kinds of tools, but we need to understand why we're using them. So the mission of the website is to support your organizations. And so sites, uh, if organizations change and websites change, they also change with time. They, you know, people diff wear different fashion uh, once in a while. And overall, uh, lifetime of the websites is at best four to five years. There's a large number of reasons why you might want to change your site. Some of them are a little bit better. Some of them are not so good. But nonetheless, actual migration starts where you hear words, we've got budget. So when you are ready to actually start migration, first, as migration experts, we recommend that you review what you've got right now. You look at your current website, uh, and you document your findings. That will help you a lot. And once you are done with your review, you can need to make large, lots of big decisions. You want to decide what you keep, what to delete, what to change, and what you're going to be adding. And based on these decisions, you have two large you know, paths. One would be if you have lots of good content that you want to keep, then you're looking at what is actual migration. And if you really don't have enough content, not that ideas or something, then you're building the new site. Today, we're going to talk about migrations. Okay. We're going to be using example of a, research, uh, web, of a website for a research center. It had a lot of good content. And we were addressing two major things. One, they had non-responsive theme, and then had, had poor experience for content managers. And for them, preserving everything that they worked through the last decade was very important. Uh, they had lots of images, lots of videos, and so for us, uh, content migration was a very big part of the contract. So we put together all kinds of our tools and uh, started this Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 migration. Um, one of the problems with Drupal, whenever I, people ask me which system you, know, you would like you would recommend we use, and I say Drupal, we say, well, we can't use Drupal because we can't upgrade. And that is true that uh, early migrations from in Drupal from one uh, version to another were real, real adventures. You had to write lots of scripts, you know, this SQL code, which is not exactly very appealing to people who are site builders. 
By the time when it was six to, when we were migrating Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, it was very routine exercise. We had the process and we had tools. You would set up your new site, you would create your content types, you will um, set data export and data import, which was with a good tool set, a uh, very well-known exercise, but still it was pretty tedious and very time consuming. So when we quoted data migration, migration portion was a huge uh, cost. Well, six to, uh, migration from six or seven to eight is just a pleasant walk in the park. And I have to admit that this upgrade via web interface was one of the most pleasant surprises that Drupal 8 uh, brought to me. And one of the biggest argument to actually move, start moving on to Drupal 8. So in the new system, we can skip uh, three very big steps and very time consuming. And instead of that, we click one button. And so we do have this one click uh, migrate and we're gonna demo it today. Um, there's actually also module migration that is available in Drupal 8. So we will do comparison because this one click upgrade and um, um, rollbacks uh, and multiple import. So um, first we are gonna look at the source site where we had very clearly um, defined content and then we're gonna, I'm gonna demo how it was actually done. With this, uh, and blessings of all the, you know, everything that, whose blessings I can get today, we're gonna dive into the live demo. So this is the old site that is not live anymore. We migrated uh, last fall. It had uh, very clearly defined, defined, defined content types, lots of them. Uh, we're gonna look at the person content type. This is very typical uh, example of a very typical content type of like almost any website that had uh, all kind of fields, images, references, uh, date, text, um, and lots of actual content, right? And then the form was configured in a particular way, so for ease of editing. So here was our process uh, for migration. We we'll go to um, uh, we go to, I go to my dashboard in Pantheon. This is a place where I want to thank uh, Pantheon for providing ideal tool set that completely, like I'm site builder, I'm working with information architecture. I don't have to know anymore, you know, I don't have to see command line. This provides me great tool set. And I click create new site. And this is gonna, uh, tell me what site would you like? And I'm gonna give it a name and, and say continue. And uh, within next five uh, minutes, my site will be built. So once I, this site is built and is gonna be Drupal 8, I get a brand new out of the bo box instance um, <coughs> And this is where I will start adding my modules. So lots of uh, modules are now in core, so we don't need to add them. So for the very basic migration, uh, I usually would add admin toolbar just for ease of operation, path auto, because I really need to have this uh, paths created automatically, and then development tool set. And after I add these modules, I'm gonna start enabling tools for migration. Migrate Drupal and Drupal Migrate UI. And then once it is done, I go, now I can go here to development and I see this new button that is called upgrade. Okay, I click upgrade and uh, it is going to ask me if I want to actually upgrade. And I say, yes, please import new configuration and content from old site. 
And here, if everything works correctly, it's going to bring me an opportunity to connect to the old site. And this is where I need to enter uh, credentials for the website. So this is one like kind of, uh, the, the, this is a little bit of a challenge sometimes because if you're a site builder and owner of, the, uh, owner of the site content, you would need to find out from your system administrator this four things. So once you, if it actually works, uh, it will allow me to enter credentials and then if you, you installed completely new website and didn't make any single changes, then you can just continue. But if, for example, you decide that you want to add another user or you want to upload a log or do anything with this blank site, it will, the, the Drupal itself will detect that something has happening on the new site and it will say, do you, do you, are you ready to lose any data that's there? And normally you would say, yes, let's go ahead. And for some reason, it's not really uh, doing what I asked it to do. Uh, so we're going to proceed. So once you click the button upgrade, then uh, Drupal will start building at the back things that are called uh, migration paths. And migration paths, there's a number of them that come from the core, and they will migrate your nodes, your taxonomy, your users. If you had any custom modules on your um, old website, or even if you use like Display Suite or some other uh, contrib modules on the uh, Drupal 7 site, Drupal might say, I have like missing upgrade paths. And at this point, you will say, okay, whatever. Unless uh, you are backend developer and it can write yourself this migrate path. And this will be migration customization, and that's something that's going to be chapter three of this presentation. So for now, we're all just site builder. We say, yes, please import new content, um, add interface, and then click button Yes, and then Drupal will start running actual migration. And you will see this uh, log messages running. And uh, first time when I saw it, I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I can't read that quickly. The good news that all these things are very conveniently recorded in the recent log messages report. And I don't have to, oh, let me do it again and again. So now since we got some connection, let's try to actually uh, run this thing and uh, and the database password. Now here you need to enter, the, another beautiful thing that I totally love about this upgrade is that I don't need to figure out what, where is my where dub 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 doc root because on different hosts it will be at different places i can simply enter url of my website and my great module itself knows how to get from the url to the files and um, so while after this all this thing has finished running we are going to arrive into site that has all the content. So after your migration has been run and completed, you can see here all your uh, log messages that, that, that tells you exactly what happened, how many nodes of each content type it upgraded. You can see like um, what fields were upgraded and on and on and on. And you have right here all the content that you had in your previous website. So great, everything is done. We can go get some cup of coffee and send email to our boss that everything is done. We just go home. Well, we're almost done. For example, I can see that um, I have been, I know that I, 
I was migrating people's profiles. I know that uh, conveniently uh, Abel starts with A, and I know that there was a lot of um, information in his profile. I saw his picture, I saw his title, but when I go to my new site, I do not see any of that. And that, of course, is like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Uh, so I see picture, but not the other things. So what happens unless you have a migration path for form and display suit, which I didn't install because we're doing just basic out of the box, I can see that all the fields are here. However, in Drupal 8 now, uh, form display is in core, so with every content type you have form display and all these fields are hidden because there is no we didn't set migration path for display suite. But good news is it takes very little time to move them back and reconfigure form display the way, the way you want it to make sure that your editor experience is consistent that what you want for new site. And in the same way, if you want to simply change display, which most likely you're gonna be doing anyway, this is your screen right there and you can just move things around and save. And things are showing up very consistently. So uh, the summary of this migration is that you've got content, content is now in your new Drupal 8. It preserves node IDs, which is a big deal because now you don't have to deal with lots of redirects and lost files. It created users and it created roles. It created taxonomies. And so all the work that you were spending on setting up migration is done with promised one click. Uh, there are some things that uh, don't work very well with this one, one click, really one click upgrade. Uh, you can't roll back. So we used um, a Pantheon as our like we would set things up, we migrate, we find some errors, and then we have to roll back. The problem with uh, this one-time migration is if you're doing continuous development and people are making changes on the life side, well, you already migrated something, you can't um, add these things in. Uh, the issue that is not addressed right now is that field, collection, field collections, which one of the biggest challenges right now, uh, does not have out of the box path. And there is a problem with plain HTML format. It looks differently in, um, so plain, for, plain text format has changed drastically from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Uh, I know that my great team is working right now on mitigating this problem and building the path but it's not uh, contributed yet. And so for our migrations, we converted everything into full HTML, migrated, and then whatever we wanted to do, uh, we could do after that. Um, so if you are doing a migration and you see a particular problem, uh, you have two options. You can write your custom script and just like, okay, we're done, or you can do a patch and send it back to uh, drupal.org, which would be a great, great solution. So with all these limitations, we want to have a little bit more tools. And here is the moment when enters Drush. We actually, um, and we want to uh, give people to have an option to have a little bit more um, options still within web interface. So we need a developer to run one Drush command after you've added migrate tools, migrate plus, and migrate manifest. This is your command. Um, as they say, your wish is my command. My wish is I can have rollback migrations at any time, day and night. And then Drush says, your wish is my command. And this is command you enter, and after that, magically, um, we have a new thing that's coming uh, coming in. Now we have a button called uh, execute site. Is this this one? No, this is not. 
okay this so we don't need anymore so we are getting button that's called migrations this is interface that Drupal Migrate and Migrate Tools and Migrate Plus provide for site builders and for people who don't want to deal with command line. This is the place where you can set up your migrations and uh, I know that Migrate team is right now working on uh, contributing to core the ability to integrate, upgrade with Migrate, but um, Right now, the only way to get this is to run that Drush command. Mm -hmm. However, great news is that now we already have, it's still in patches, but there's URL that you can add that you now get this execute button. And this is the button that allows you to actually execute migrations. So you can import things, you can roll back, and you can all also stop if like if you get migration of 10,000 nodes and apparently something is wrong, you can stop migration in the middle and then you can reset and clean it up. Okay, so when I say import, so in this group of migrations, uh, so this, this is migration, then there is a migration group and then I can go into this migration and I'm gonna say execute. And this button triggers one at a time uh, th that, that the large migration that you saw happening with one upgrade, like as a whole thing. Now you have the granularity to say, please only import people, or please only import research areas, or whatever you need to do. And if, for example, you want to stop that migration or you want to roll it back, you have an option to do that. So once migration has been completed, I have now here like all the people and one research area. And let's say um, there were like large number of changes happened on the original site. Here I can say roll back please. And if everything works as expected, then it will roll back and remove all the nodes and I will have maybe clean interface uh, with only the nodes that I need. And then I can run this migrations back and forth as many times as I need. So these are, if you want to get this execute buttons, you need to get these patches. They have not been pushed uh, out to the uh, you know live versions yet, but they are there, and this is uh, migration options that you get once you add these patches. Migrate manifest module also allows you option to uh, customize migration even to a more granularity by adding manifests. So manifest is the list of the the, the list of migrations that you saw over there. They are all listed in the file called manifest YAML. And so if you want to intercept migration, you can create your own manifest for a particular type. So you want to do news differently. And then, for example, this, this famous uh, field text format, this is where you need to write your own custom plugin. Or for example, you're manipulating really your own data. This is where you can intercept it and write your own scripts. And the biggest news that I would like to announce for the next two minutes that I still have for presentation is that Feeds module is actually working now. It has been released, um, I think, in February. It has now CSV import working for Drupal 8. Uh, Temper UI is working. And um, we have uh, discussions for Feeds on, we have weekly meetup where um, technical discussions are happening. This URL is listed on the uh, like drupal.org module feeds. So any, everyone is cordially invited to come and participate and ask questions and test patches. And we're gonna have sprint tomorrow at 11 o'clock uh, downstairs in the sprint room. 
And if anybody wants to participate, please join us for um, feeds and migrate sprint. Um, so this is the summary of your migration with ease from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. One-time migration is your content is ready. Enable Migrate and Tools Plus if you need to go back and forth, or use feeds as to bring additional content. So with this said, I would like to thank everyone for coming to this presentation. Uh, join us for sprints, and thank you very much.